everyone, Nadine Briggs here from Simply Social Kids. I wanted to talk to you today about some really simple steps that you can take today to start to improve your child's resiliency as well as your own. We've talked a lot about resiliency over the last year and a half. It's certainly been, that word has been thrown around a lot more than it had previous to the pandemic. And obviously we all need to be resilient during really, really difficult times, which we're all, all in right now. But how to really do that? What are the steps that you can take today to really begin to build that resiliency for your child, for yourself, just basically in your family? Let's talk about them one by one. So the, the first one is just to really carve out time to socialize with friends. Now. More, there, there are a lot of people out there that don't have friends. We're gonna talk about that in a second. But if you do have friends, you can schedule some social time with them, which is gonna certainly give you some levity and some fun, and maybe just a break from your the daily grind and maybe what your, your worries and struggles are. And just to carve out that time for that levity and that enjoyment to be around other friends. Friends can also be someone to vent to or just discuss your problems or your concerns or your struggles. And they might have tips or just a just a sympathetic ear for you to talk to them and that can really help you to to feel like you've got that support system with that friend group to be able to get through really hard times now for the people that don't have that friend group and there are a lot of people out there we're talking not just kids but adults as well who have lost touch with friends in the past they just don't have that friend group so we want to find those friends and that can be a little bit harder to do, but certainly joining clubs and going and go out and doing activities with pe trying to find people who are like minded. So if you have a child who loves something like Dungeons and Dragons, going and finding a Dungeons and Dragons club for that child to join so you know that they have like interest with the other people there. If you yourself as a parent don't have uh, a friend group, there's different clubs that you can join like the Elks Club or the Kiwanis Club or, or places like that or do some volunteer work. Volunteering is a great way to get out there, really meet some people and really take friendships to the next level because you have that, that common interest. So it can take some effort. Friendship takes effort, but it's certainly well worth it, especially during hard times. You can rely on those friends and have that time. And a lot of people also don't really think about scheduling time with friends. So they might have friends, but they haven't seen them. They've been out of touch. And just taking it as a like an appointment on your calendar of saying, okay, today I'm gonna to call some people and meet up somewhere, or even if you're not comfortable going out in the public, just having a Zoom or online call with them, or even just texting them. Hey, how you doing? Feeling kind of bored today, what are you doing? And just checking in on somebody can also be another way to kind of connect and feel like you've got that level of support. So the second one is to reframe thoughts. Now, a lot of people don't realize or really understand the fact that you really do have control over all of your thoughts. A lot of times we feel that we don't because these thoughts just keep going on in our head all the time and we really feel like we have to think think about certain things. But if we reframe the way we look at things, um, it can really make a really huge difference and just a slight change can make a really big difference. So one of the things to, to note is that human beings have kind of a negativity bias. If you've ever had a situation where you've gotten feedback on a project or job or something, and you so they gave you all kinds of great feedback, but they give you one area or two areas where you needed some improvement, what do we do? We focus on those areas that people say we need improvement. We don't focus on all the great things that they said about us. And so that's kind of our negativity bias. We had a, a, a child, or I shouldn't say child, she's a teenager in one of our groups who came on and she said, I have had the worst weekend ever. And she went on to talk about how she went to a birthday party on Saturday and she played tennis with another friend on Sunday. And over the course of those two days and all that socializing, she'd gotten six mosquito bites. And so that was just horrible. I mean, she really focused on those mosquito bites, which I'm sure were uncomfortable and itchy and all that kind of stuff. But really focusing on the mosquito bite versus the the social time that she had, which sounded pretty significant over the course of a weekend. I mean, I don't have that much socializing in a weekend that we can choose to say, you know what, I'm not going to focus on those mosquito bites. I'm going to focus on the fact that I got to spend time with friends both days this weekend and, and I had a lot of fun with them. Yeah, there was a few mosquito bites, but I'm going to really shift my, my thinking to the good things that had happened. And also when we go through hard times, just reframing how we think about it, you know, and saying things to ourselves like, wow, I really had to adapt during that hard time. Like I did a pretty good job, like figuring it out. Or, boy, I'm really a lot stronger than I ever thought I was, you know, given what I just lived through. Or I feel stronger now and more capable because I have gone through like an incredible challenge. So the way we talk to ourselves, the way we think about things really does make a difference. And just really focusing on 
on being grateful what we do have and not focusing on what's what's absent in our lives or what isn't going well. That is enormous in terms of building resiliency. It really, really is. And we are all in control of that as are our kids. And so we can teach them to just reframe and focus on those things. Another way to build resiliency is to just increase your optimism. And there are strategies to do that. And, and one of the most proven ways to do that is something called the three, three good things exercise, sometimes also called the three blessings exercise. And what this is, is just carve out some time in the day where you write down three good things that happened that day and why those things were good. And if you do that for even just one week, every day for a week, and then you, you, you'll you start to find yourself looking at different things in your day going, you know, hey, that thing that just happened was pretty good. I ought to add that to my list when I do my list today. And so you'll start to notice that your brain will start to focus on the things that are going well versus the things that are, are struggles throughout your day. So just, just increasing your optimism by doing that, it takes just a little bit of time. It's a super easy exercise for most. I will tell you, I do have some kids who can't even find one good thing Thing in their day and that child might or teen might need some help help um, identifying what the good things are in their day well, sometimes they get so caught up in the negative that they can't even figure out what the good things are so with some help we can do that okay the third thing is to learn to flourish well what do i mean by that so flourishing is basically just doing doing your best in life and just having your best life just well-being overall well-being and the way to look at that is an acronym called perma and PERMA stands for positive emotions, engagement, relationships, meaning, and achievement. And when you think about those four, those four areas or those four boxes and start to say, look at your life and your child's life and say, okay, you know, it, are there times in my child's life that, that really feel, fill them with a lot of happiness and get, give them a lot of positive emotions when they're doing that or when they're interacting in that way with, with other people or an activity or something? Is there something in their life that gives them that, that happiness? Is there, are there things that engage them so fully that they just lose track of time? Do they have relationships that are really solid with friends or family so that they feel accepted and they have that comfort level that they have people who really care for them for who they are? Do they have meaning in their lives and or do they ever contribute to like a greater good? Do they ever do volunteerism or, or, or work on a cause that might give them, them meaning or the M part of PERMA? And is there an area of their lives that they have a lot of achievement and satisfaction? Is there something that they're really good at that they can kind of hold on to that and say, you know, I really excel in this particular area? If there are any holes or spots to fill in any of those five categories, that's a great way to sort of self-reflect and say, you know, what could we do to maybe have some more charitable contributions in our life, whether it's your, your money or your time, and, and make that M part of PERMA just a little bit more robust and all of the different parts of, of the PERMA model and just take a look at it to help, help everybody to live their, their best and to flourish. And when you have all those things checked off, then your ability to handle the storms that come is way, way stronger because you, you've got all this, this well-being and all the things that are, are checked off on your, your well-being um, acronym. So that's just something to think about for, for the, and again, your child and the whole family just to see how you're doing in those areas. The other, next way we're going to talk about is to really focus on strengths. So we all kind of inherently probably know what our strengths are, but to really know what is, what is it that I'm really good at? What's in my DNA? What's in my, my, my top in terms of what I can do that's really easy for me? And there is a survey called a VIA character strength survey that we have all the kids who come to our center take. And it's really enlightening because what it does is it ranks 24 character strengths. The top five are the things that are just really easy for each individual. And the survey has been taken so many times, it's really kind of crazy how spot on it is for each individual. But it's a really fascinating exercise. Survey is a little bit long. If you have a little bit of an attention issue or if your child does, it's totally fine to leave it and come back. It's really worth it. Because when you see what those top five are, you can say, okay, Am I using those top five strengths to their fullest right now? Is there anything I could do in my life to change things in order to, to increase the usage of those top five strengths? So for example, let's say creativity is in your top five and you, you're not you know, doing, making music, you're not writing stories, you're not drawing, you're not doing anything creative really in your life. And just finding time, maybe join an art class or take up a musical instrument or something that's creative that you enjoy so that you're, you're exercising that strength. 
One other thing about strengths to keep in mind is that sometimes they can be overused and they can cause problems, which is probably a subject for a whole other blog, um, but just something to keep in mind that sometimes these strengths can be overused and then they can become a little bit of a negative. So just kind of keep that in mind. Those are five ways that you and your child can begin to really work on improving their resiliency today. They're, they're really not that hard. Um, they might take some thinking and some self-reflection, but they're really, really important. And once you have even these, these five steps or these try these five tips, hopefully you'll find that resiliency starts to build. And when things go wrong, you might find that your child is really handling it way better than they used to. And these are no cost, fairly simple little strategies that you can try. I really hope they work for you. Um, if you did like this video and you found it useful and you think you might try those, those tips, I'd love to hear from you. And if you could also hit the like button and hit subscribe so you can hear more from us um, in future videos. And if I encourage you to go back through our YouTube channel and look at the other videos too to see if there are any other topics that might be of interest to you. So I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for listening.